All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. I was glad when they said that let's go into the house of the Lord. Anybody happen to be in the Lord's house this morning? I want to say good morning to everybody in Paradise Missionary Baptist Church, to everybody who is tuned in to this service this morning out there. Um, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So today, my name is Jesse Funches, and this is Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. And uh, today I'm going to read the word for you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Become before, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the shot and the, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all nations. I have just read for you uh, the 100th Psalm. May the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen, amen. All right, so may we bow our heads in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Thank you for this wonderful and glorious day that you have allowed us to see. Lord, we count ourselves among the blessed because you've allowed us to wake up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see this day. Lord, you have waken us up today, allowed us to have a reasonable portion of health to wake us up, let us be in our right minds. Father, you have blessed our labor. You have protected our families. You have put a hedge around our neighborhoods, around our houses, around our businesses, and for that we are truly grateful, and we are here to give you praise, Father. Lord, thank you for every single person. Bless every single person here in this broadcast and here in this church service this morning. Open up our hearts and minds, and we hope that our praise and our worship and our tithes and our offerings are good enough for you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad to be in the land of living one more time? Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on and open up your mouth and tell them you love them. Father God, we thank you for our brand new day. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you for making a way for us again. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we bless your name on high today. Father God, we're grateful for the things that you've done for us, for making ways for us, for providing for us, for giving us exactly what we need. And there's some things on that we want them today as well. Father God, we're so grateful to be in your house. Father God, wherever you are, be found giving God the best praise you can give him. The best hallelujah, the best thank you, Jesus, the best Lord, I love you, because he is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun. To the going down to the same. The Lord is worthy. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, give him praise today. We've come to give God our best praise. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I serve a good God on this morning. A God that rules and reigns over all. He is the Lion of Judah. He is the Lion of Judah. He rules and he reigns. And I'm so glad that I can cast my cares on him. And he cares for me. Hallelujah. We're going to start praising worship period. But he is the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah. If you're looking at neighbor, come on, stand on your feet. Come on and make an atmosphere of worship wherever you are. In your home, in your car, in the kitchen. You might even be in your bedroom. Come on and stand on your atmosphere with worship.
things are possible. Without him, we're nothing, y'all. We have to understand that Paul, the God that we serve is strong enough to, to handle our fears. He can direct us in the path that he wants us to go. We just got to keep our eyes focused on him. He will direct our path. I'm a living witness on this morning. Father God, we, we're casting our cares on you this morning. Some of us are going through some things. We're going through some storms. We're going through some tests. Some things are holding us from our destiny. Some bad habits are holding us from our destiny. But we believe that we look to the hills from which come and our help. All of our help come from you. Anybody grateful that you can call on the name of Jesus on this morning? <laughs> that name Jesus is a strong tower. That name Jesus can, can ease your doubts and calm your fears. That name of Jesus can, can make everything right. Even in a, a world of turmoil, he can make it right for you. He can give you peace. Yes. He can give you hope. Yes. <laughs> if you need some joy, he can give you that too. Yes, so right in this very moment, wherever you are, I challenge you just to lift up your hands in worship. Come on and just love on them. Worship is it's just a simple compliment to our God, boasting about him, speaking well of him. So out of your own mouth, come on and just tell him who he is to you. Father God, you've been a healer. You've been a provider. You've been a protector. You've been a marriage counselor, Lord. Father God, you've given me patience with my children. You've, you've provided for my finances. Father God, you've elevated me on my job. Father God, I'm glad that I'm just in the land of the living. Father God, I don't take for granted that you have put your hand on me. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your grace. I'm thankful for your mercy. I'm thankful for your healing power. Some people haven't experienced COVID, but I know I have. And I'm glad that I, I, I experienced this healing power. Because many didn't make it. Hallelujah. But I'm glad that I was one who did. I thank you for your healing. I thank you for your protection, Lord. By no goodness of my own that I'm here today. So we declare that you are Jesus. No fancy cliche, no fancy rhyme. Jesus is just enough for me. Come on, let's call this name today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, children of God, help me say that this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's a simple thing. Come on, lift it up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He can ease your doubts and calm your fears. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, sir. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, let's lift it up like we know the name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. He's my king of kings. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he's the Lord of lords. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We love to call your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Demons have the trouble when you call that name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Blinded eyes are open when we call that name.
thank you all so much for your flexibility. Amen. As we are in this new season, having to do things differently. Amen. 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 I'm going to come down. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow? Oh, most gracious and eternal God, our Father, how we bless your name. Father, how we thank you, God, for this opportunity to commemorate what you did for us through your Son, Jesus Christ, on Calvary. Amen. Father, we pray, oh God, that before we even partake in this serious moment here in the church, God, we pray that if there's anything in our hearts and minds that should not be, we humbly pray for your forgiveness, God. We repent, oh God, because we want our hearts to be right before you as we prepare to partake of these holy sacraments. God, I pray that you will bless the way that it represents the body of our Lord that was broken for us. God, I pray that you will bless the cup that represents the juice, that represents the blood that Jesus shed for us on Calvary. And God, we'll be so careful to give your name praise, honor, and glory. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let God's people say amen. 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 At this time, we're going to prepare to serve. If you have not been served, raise your hand, please. Or I want to make sure I can get one of you all to just take a trade. This is a point to serve the devil now, sir. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Let us all drink. Thank you, Lord. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Our worship team is going to come with another selection, and then we're going to get in the word of God for today. Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Hallelujah. 
we thank God for the blood this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I came with the praise in my heart. I thank God for the blood of Jesus. I thank God for the sacrifice. I thank God that I'm able to give him praise over today. Come on, brother. Put your hands together.
Yes, sir. I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for God. God has done some great things in our lives. The fact that he will give his only son for us. Sacrificing his only begotten son. I, I know too many people that will give the first son. I probably wouldn't give up Joshua James. But I'm grateful for the sacrifice that was made. And because that sacrifice was made, I have another opportunity to get this thing right. To change some ways, to, to change some thoughts, change some places I go, and be more like him. At the end of the day, that's what this journey is about, being more like him and being within his will. Anybody trying every day to be closer to him? Anybody striving to be more like him? Hallelujah. And for that, God, we worship and adore your name. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. Father God, you are strong and mighty. Father God, you are a bridge over troubled water. Your water when we're thirsty. Father God, your bread when we're hungry. Father God, we thank you for being a mind regulator. We thank you for being a heart fixer. Thank you for being a mender of relationships. Father God, thank you for watching over us. Thank you for caring for us more than we even care for ourselves. We offer up the sacrifice of praise on this morning. Even though we're hurting, we offer up the sacrifice of praise. Even though we might be going through storms and tribulations, we offer up the sacrifice of praise. We worship and adore your name today.
He's a way maker. He's a deliverer. He's a strong tower. He's everything we need. I dare you just to give him praise right there. I dare you just to magnify his name right there. I dare you just to give him glory right there. Because he's worthy. Nobody else receives the glory. Nobody else receives the honor. Nobody else receives the praise. Oh, but he's worthy. Oh, worthy is our God. 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 If I got to praise him by myself, I'll go ahead and praise him. But if you know that he's worthy, if you know that you know,
go through whatever you went through, you're still here by the grace of God. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Thank you.
Now what happened? That as they went, that he entered into a certain village. Yes. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary. All right. Who also sat at Jesus' feet and Come heard on. his word. Come on, but Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. Amen. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, 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 Martha. you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken from her. As we're basking in this worship experience, I just want to preach from the subject, an encounter at the feet of Jesus. Come on. Amen. An encounter at the feet of Jesus. You may be seated if you can in the presence of Almighty God. Oh, yes. An encounter at the feet of Jesus. Uh, through life, I've met many people who just seem to have something about them where it seems that they possess a walk with God that's far beyond anything that you've ever experienced yourself. And you wonder, how is it possible that this person can be in tune and be so in touch with Jesus? How is it they can accomplish such a great thing? And it seems like, I don't know what it is, but it's like when you look at them, it's just like they have this look on their face that just tells you yeah. that, hey, I've been with Jesus. As I look at many of your faces today, as we have had such an awesome time just basking in the glory and the presence of God. Many of you all who are sitting here, many of you all who are watching, just have this look I'm showing your face that says, hey, you know what? I've been with Jesus. And here in today's text, we see that uh, there's a woman by the name of Mary who was Lazarus and Martha's sister. And she's actually mentioned three times in the gospel account. But uh, what's so amazing is that every time she's mentioned, if you re really do a good study on it, she's always at the feet That's right. of Jesus. That's right. Am I right about it? Right. Uh, we see here that, that her experience, her experience that we see in the text should be able to teach us some valuable lessons about our own personal walk with the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I, every day of my life, I struggle and I, and I try my best to want to rest and abide at the feet of Jesus. Because if you ever just take time and get to the feet of Jesus, you'll notice that you'll find peace of mind, you'll find power of life, and you'll find purpose before God. And, and many of us, day by day, strive to have this type of encounter with Jesus. And, and, and but the only place you can find the church is right there at the feet of the master. But in this, in this text, and I'm not going to be before us long today, but in this text, I want us to look at something. I want us to see the significance uh, for Mary and what she found at the feet of Jesus as also what we can find when we go to the feet of Jesus. The first thing we see in the text is this. We first of all, we find food for our souls. We find food for our souls. Here it is. Verse 39, it says, and she had a sister uh, called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Now, I want us to look at the flip side of that because you'll notice that see Martha was more concerned with physical nourishment. Right. Yeah. However, Mary was concerned about getting her soul faith. And what happened with Mary is she placed herself in the presence of Jesus so she could feed her soul and have strength for the journey that lies ahead. And the reason why uh, many of us uh, lack uh, nourishment, the reason why many of us lack uh, spiritual nourishment, rather, is because we don't take time to sit at the feet of Jesus and receive his word. Many of us are tired spiritually. Yeah. 
I got to be real with us. See, there are even times when, when I have become tired spiritually. I, I got a lot of physical strength, but, but my spiritual strength is off. I can get up and go run a marathon. I can get up and, and do this, that, and other. I got energy for everything physically, but yet my spiritual, uh, my spiritual strength is dwindling. And oftentimes I discover, um, I discover, church, that when my spiritual strength is off. That means I haven't been eating the proper That's spiritual That's diet. <laughs> I haven't been partaking and eating it from the Word of God like I'm supposed to. I have not. I have not taken time to read and, and to study and to hear what God has to say to me. And let me tell you something. Even as a preacher, we can sit up here and study to preach, but when you don't study the Word for yourself to know. You can get spiritually malnourished. I, 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 there have been time, seasons in my ministry where I can get up and, and preach and preach and preach and preach and teach and teach and teach. And the message is blessing people. However, I'm suffering. I'm feeding you. But I'm not feeding myself. I wish I had some help. I, I'm making sure you eat. But I'm not eating myself. Uh, the, the, there's, uh, I remember uh, growing up, uh, many times uh, my mother and even you know most people in my family, they would cook all this good food. Uh -huh. And they make sure everybody got a plate. Uh -huh. They make sure everybody's well fed, but yet they'll go stand off to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Especially around the holidays, and they'll be looking like, Lord, I'm so tired. God, I've been in this kitchen all, all night. I'm tired. It's Thanksgiving. I'm ready to eat. And you're wondering, like, why ain't you going to eat? You, you done fed everybody else. You need to sit down and eat. And many times, we're so busy feeding and pouring out into other folks that yet we don't stop and take time to eat ourselves. So when I open the word of God, I got to make sure I get some time in, not just for you, but I got to make sure I get some time in for me. Uh, I'm reminded of what uh, Timothy said in 2 Timothy, uh, what Paul said to Timothy rather in 2 Timothy 2.15, he said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Also, 1 Peter tells us in uh, chapter 2, verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If you don't eat, you won't grow. Let me say that again. If you don't eat, you won't grow. They say three times a charm. I'll try one more time. If you don't eat, you won't grow. Amen. And many of us, yeah, we're eating the physical food. We're, we're cooking the physical food. We're, we're on our vegan diets and we're trying to eat healthy. We done gave up red meat and, and we're eating all this other stuff. But when was the last time we got into the meat of the word of God? And what Mary was desiring to do was she, instead she wasn't worried about the physical food, but what she was saying ultimately to Jesus and to her sister was that I need some spiritual food. Yeah, that's I yeah she needs some spiritual food. Uh, yeah, so so she said that Jesus speak for food for, for her soul. But watch this. Not only um, when, it's, uh, when you look at being in the feet of Jesus, not only do you get food for your soul, but watch this. You have a chance to focus your priorities. That's right, that's right. Focus your priorities. I'm right here in the text. I'm still here in verse 39. He said uh, the first uh, verse, the B part of the verse says, she heard, she sat at Jesus' feet, I'm talking about uh, Mary, and heard his word. So right here, the text tells us where the priorities for Mary were. Martha's priority was being in the kitchen trying to make sure the guests were served right. But Mary's priority was enjoying time in the Lord's presence. And many times what I've discovered, Sister Nisha, is that uh, our spiritual maturity level is directly related to the amount of time we spend in God's presence. It's, it's related directly to that. You can tell somebody's maturity level by the amount of, you can tell by the, like judging from uh, how much time rather they spend in the presence of God. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, folks who still are quick to cuss people out. You're not spending that much time in God's presence. Folks that are still driving down 288 and, and shooting the finger at folks for cutting you off in traffic. 
not spending too much time in the Lord. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about me right now. Folks who who uh, who 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 have a lying spirit on, <laughs> helping somebody, not spending them time in the Lord's presence, and it shows. And many times, the reason why many people fall out in the church is because and, and get mad and want to leave the church as soon as the pastor or the leader says something that they don't agree with is mainly because they're not spending enough time in the Lord's presence. Because see, if you spend time in the Lord's presence, the Holy Spirit would reveal to you oftentimes what's getting ready to happen in the church and what the leader's getting ready to say or what the leader's getting ready to do. That's what happens when you spend time in God's presence. Yeah, you, we have to learn how to prioritize. And many times, uh, many of us, and myself, I've been guilty of this, when, when, when we take, uh, when everything else, rather, takes precedence over being with the Lord, then what happens is we place ourselves in danger. Because what we're doing right now, we're so busy doing church work uh, instead of doing the work of the church. Uh oh y'all do know there's a difference between church work and doing the work of the church. Okay, Pastor, let's talk about church work. Church work, let me give you an old missionary Baptist example. Church work is uh, when uh, the worship experience is going on, whether it be a regular Sunday morning, an anniversary Bible study, whatever it is, but yet we're so busy uh, cooking in the kitchen or we're so busy mopping floors, or, or we're so busy trying to direct the traffic outside that the, while the word is going forth, and then what happens is we end up being so into that. Yeah, we doing we doing the work, and we doing the Lord's work. We just out here serving. I'm working with Jesus. I'm working with Jesus. Night and day, I'm working with Jesus. But yet we're not doing the work of the church, which really entails discipleship. That's right. And when I say it entails discipleship, that means that I'm sitting down and being taught. That's, a, that's what a disciple does. A disciple is a learner. That's right. Am I right, Sister McCary? A disciple is a learner. You're sitting down and being taught. And see, Martha was doing church work. But Mary was doing the work of the church. Oh, I wish y'all preaching, baby. I'll say amen. See, Martha was doing church work. She was in the kitchen. Uh, she's the head of the kitchen committee, the head of the hospitality committee. Pastor, you know we got all these guests coming in, and I want to make sure everything is right, and I want to make sure that, that everything is in place. And, and Pastor, I'm sorry, I can't be in the worship service. I can't be in the actual sanctuary because I got to make sure all this stuff is right. But at the same time, you got Sister Mary who's in the sanctuary. You got Sister Mary who's sitting down at the feet of the man of God so she can get fed and she can get some food for her soul. In church, don't be so busy and don't get so wrapped up into church work and your position and your title that we forget to do the work of the church, which is being a disciple and also discipling others. We got to focus on our priorities. I'm reminded of the Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Y'all know uh, this was uh, the church at Ephesus. And you know, Jesus, he praised them. Deacon Robinson, all the great things they were doing. Oh, yes, you're, you, you've done so many awesome things. Y'all got it going on. I mean, yes, you're coming against people who come against me. Yeah, that's all good. But I got this one thing against you. You have forsaken your first love. And many of us, uh, we yes, we claim, I love my church. I love paradise. You ought to come to church. Yeah, we have a lot of great things going on. Yeah, we have a, a pastor who preaches and teaches. We have an awesome praise and worship team. Yeah, but yet we're still forsaking our first love. Amen. And we got to be careful that we don't ever forsake our first love. Our priority is to him. Our priority is to God through Jesus Christ. And remember, everything else falls under. And part of prioritizing is making sure that I take time and spend time in the presence of God. Let me hit the last thing here because not only do we see the food for our souls and not only do we see that we uh, you have to find focus for your priorities, but the last thing is this. At the feet of Jesus, you can find yourself. Find yourself. That's it. You can find yourself. Period. Period. You not find yourself doing this. That find yourself. Here it is in the text, verse 41 and 42. It says, uh, and Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken from her. Now, watch this, because our people, you know, sometimes preachers, we can be kind of hard on Sister Martha. 
And I don't want us to be hard on Martha. That's not my intention in this message today. Because, it could, because really, honestly, Martha was not totally in error. But what we've got to understand is that Martha was just overwhelmed by her work yeah. that she lost sight on her own self-care. Uh-oh. She was more worried about the work and she lost sight on her own self-care. Church, can I just stick a pen right here as my friend Pastor Joseph Mays who's going to be here next Sunday as he would say, let me stick a nickel in the meat and park right here for a second and help y'all with something. Uh, church, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Yes, we know that when we're in positions and when we're in ministry, we know that we have responsibilities. But every now and then, you got to say, Pastor, I need to take a week off. Yes. Pastor, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm not really where I need to. I need to take me some time. I, I need to just, now I ain't say go take a long extended sabbatical. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. But every now and then, we have to just stop for a moment and just take a breather like, that. okay, no, nah, because I got to take care of myself. Because you're no good when you're out serving everybody else and working so hard and you're not taking care of yourself. And one thing I tell people, and I got deacons here who can attest to this, when something's going on with your personal uh, body physically or something's going on with your family, the one of the first things I tell them, don't be trying to run up to this church and do everything. You take care of yourself first. Amen. I, I hate to pick on him, but, but I, tell, I told Deacon Raymond Williams, I told him, I said, man, look, you need to take care of you. You can't be running up here to the church every time the doors are open and you're undergoing what you're going through. You need to make sure you're good. You need to make sure your wife is good. You need to make sure your family's good. Paradise, let me tell y'all something. I love you. I'll do anything for you. But when it gets to the point where I feel like my body's breaking down or when my wife is breaking down and my kids are breaking down, I'm not going to see y'all that Sunday. We got enough people who can come up here and preach and give leadership in my absence. But I got to take care of me. Because again, if you can't, I heard somebody say, you can't pour from an empty cup. That's right. And if I'm empty, I can't help you none. That's right. Amen. And that's that. Let me move on to, the, to this next point here. Because, because see, but this is what Mary found. See, Mary found that when she sat at Jesus' feet, she found contentment and fulfillment, which is worth more than anything else in the world. Amen. Okay, see, and let me help us with something else here because if many of us could go ahead and take on the same attitude that Mary took on, we could put a whole bunch of psychologists and psychiatrists out of business. Hold on, hold on, let me put some balance there because, yeah, there are times when you do need to go get some professional help. That's not, I'm, not, I'm not negating professional help at all, but there are some times when there are some things that just a little self-care will take, take care of. Amen. See, because uh, uh, many times people, uh, when, we, when we're not in, at the feet of Jesus and we're not spending time in his presence, uh, that's what causes us to kind of get into a mindset where we feel like we got to go call on this person and that person to try to help us. And, and again, pastor will sit down and talk to you, pray for you, counsel you, whatever it is I need to do. But when we learn how to spend more time in the presence of God, you don't have to spend so much time in my office. Yeah. Or you don't have to spend so much time on my Zoom or, or we don't have to spend so much time sitting in the fellowship, fellowship hall trying to help you to work through some things. Now again, I'm here to serve. I'm here to assist you know, when you can't do it on your own, but I'm just trying to give us something to help us today. Amen. Amen. Because watch this. Jesus tells us, according to Matthew 11, 28, 29, he promises that we can find rest at his feet. He said, come to me. All you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, because I am quiet, gentle, and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Many times we're spending time trying to find ourselves. I need to go find myself. I need to go to this little retreat here and try to find myself. I need to go over here and try to find myself. Let me go to this palm reader and find myself. Let me go to this, this fortune teller and find myself. Let me tell y'all something. If you spend enough time at the feet of Jesus, if you spend enough time with him, if you spend enough time in his presence, I guarantee you, you can find yourself. Preach, Davis. I'm doing the best I can. You got to learn how to spend time at Jesus' feet. See, many times we want to look at Jesus' hand. Give me, give me, give me. Lord, what can you do for me? Lord, I need this. Lord, I need 
that, oh God, I need this for every dollar. These are all the things I need. And here's my long uh, Santa Claus Christmas list of some things I need you to do. But instead of spending so much time looking at the hands of Jesus, we've got to learn how to spend some time looking at the feet of Jesus. I wish I had a witness here. Now let me go ahead and close here. Because my question I want to ask you, Paradise, is this. I want to know, where do you find yourself this morning? Where do you find yourself? Do you find yourself like Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him, learning from him, and just taking time to love him? Amen. Or are you like Martha, working hard, all over the place, not taking time to really experience what's most important? Church, Jesus, and I'm done when I say this, Jesus wants us to grow spiritually. But church, it requires our devotion. It requires us to take time to really be at the feet of Jesus. Spend some time with him. Let him teach you. Let him minister some things to you. You know, I can just recall even before I became a pastor, or even before I started preaching, well, yeah, before I started preaching, um, I would be at such a spiritual low. And you know what? Come to think of it, Stephon, it was even after I became a pastor, too. I would find myself at a spiritual low. And sometimes I have to stop and ask myself, when was the last time you just spent time in the presence of God? Amen. When was the last time you just took some time and spent some time with Jesus? Like I said earlier, I ain't talking about spending time trying to prepare a message. Amen. Anybody can prepare a message. Anybody can do a sermon outline. I'm talking about really getting into the word yeah, for, yourself. for yourself, feeding yeah. your soul. Because see, there are things that God wants to say to me that he don't necessarily want to say to y'all. Oh, help me somebody. And see, I got to be careful not to mix up the two because earlier on in my pastor, you know, God would give me uh, uh, scriptures to study. And I was thinking, Sister McHenry, this was a sermon. And I get up there trying to preach a message and everybody looking at me sideways like, why is he preaching this? And then I get my the Holy Spirit convicts me after I'm done and say, dummy, that wasn't for them. That was for you. <laughs> that was you. You needed that word for you. And there are times, when, and but see, once again, you find it all at the feet of Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 I'm done, y'all. You thought I had my praise. Amen. Amen. When we got our shout out early before the message. Yeah, that was good. Amen. This, this wasn't one. I couldn't hoop this one. So, you know, we just had to, you know, we, we'll, we'll get some hooping next Sunday. Amen. 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 As we, as we, uh, as we prepare uh, to open the doors of the church to extend the invitation, I want to give somebody a chance who does not know Jesus in a real and personal way to get to know him today. Amen. If you, if you know that you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you know that you are not in fellowship with him, Amen. this is your chance to get to know him today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we want to pray with you to receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. Also, you might have, uh, have accepted Christ a while back, but for whatever reason, you've uh, gone into a backslidden state. We want to give you the opportunity to rededicate your life to Christ. Amen. Also, you might be here today or you might be watching today and, and you might not have a church home. We want to invite you to become a part of the Paradise Church family. Amen. But this is a great place. It's an awesome ministry where, where you can really get food for your soul. Where you can get fed and you can and you can actually come in and spend time at the feet of Jesus. And you have a loving church family who's going to welcome you and love you. Amen. amen. If, you're, if that is you, if you're here online, amen, I want you just to type in, we have some codes in there, type in the comments that I want to unite with paradise. If you, you desire prayer, type in the comments, I desire prayer. Yeah. Amen. Because we want to give you that opportunity, amen, to, to either accept Christ, to rededicate your life, or to even become a member of the Paradise Church family. There's room for you. You can join virtually. There's room for you. Amen. As the music department comes, we want to give you a chance to make a decision. Amen.
or reject. Amen. We thank God for you. Come on, can we just bless the name of the Lord? For this place? Amen. Well, church, it is now giving time. Amen. 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 Can we get excited for God love the children? Give up. Amen. It is offering time. Amen. We're asking you all, please. Amen. On this second Sunday, let's bring our tithe and our offering. Amen. Because we know that this is a requirement according to the word of God. And I told you before that God, although he is not a respecter of persons, he is a respecter of principles. And the principles of his word say, according to Malachi chapter 3, that we're to bring the tithe into the storehouse. And he promises that he will open up the windows of heaven, pour us out a blessing one to where we don't have room enough to receive. Amen. Amen. For those of y'all who are faithful tithers, we thank God for you. We appreciate you. Continue in your faithfulness in tithing. Amen. Amen. For those of you all who have not started tithing yet, we encourage you, we challenge you today, this day, this first Sunday in February to become a consistent and faithful tithe and watch God move in your experience. Watch God move in your finances. Amen. Because God is not going to come short of his word. Amen. He is going to prompt whatever he promised. That is exactly what he's going to do. So we want to be faithful in our giving paradise. We, we've been slacking up a little bit. Amen. We got to bring it back up. Amen. Amen, Amen paradise. Amen. I should see. I don't, I don't see any comments. I should hope there's some thumbs going up right now. Amen. So I want us to make sure that we are obedient in our giving. Amen. Not just obedient to the pastor, but obedient to God. Our giving platforms are available on the screen. Those of you all who are here in the sanctuary, amen, we will have a deacon in place in the rear once we dismiss to receive your tithe and your offering. Amen. Also, if you would like your 2020 contribution statement, Please see the link on the member's Facebook page to fill that out. The deadlines request that uh, is February the 14th, which is next Sunday. Amen. So you got one more week to request it. After February 14th, we will not be accepting any more uh, contribution statements requests. Amen. So let's, uh, if you want your contribution statement for tax purposes, please, between now and Sunday, Please go to that link and get that. If you don't have the link, if you don't have Facebook, get with somebody. We'll make sure that we can get that for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Join us this Wednesday for Bible study, our virtual Bible study. Amen. We had an awesome time in Sunday school this morning on our Zoom. Amen. We did it for the first time. Amen. 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 So those of y'all who are watching, don't miss next Sunday. I want y'all to get on Zoom. Amen. And we're going to have an awesome time. The link, the password, the uh, member ID, all of that will be on, or the meeting ID, not the member ID. All of that will be available so you can join us. I told the people who were there this morning to each one reach one, each one invite one. So I'm inviting you all to be a part of our Sunday school. Amen. 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 Also want to be in prayer. Amen. For those names that are on our prayer list, as well as the Phillips family, we want to continue oh, yes. praying for them. Amen. 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 As Brother Phillips uh, has lost his mother. Amen. But we want to continue. Sister Phillips is here with us in the sanctuary today. Amen. Amen. So we thank God for seeing her here in the worship experience. We want Amen. to pray for that family in a special way. Also want to be in prayer for the Booker family and the greatest St. Matthew Church family as our good friend uh, Dr. Gustav Booker. God has called him home on this past week. Amen. As you know, if you were here for the installation, he was actually on program last year. Amen. So thankful that we had that opportunity to experience him. Amen. Before God called him home. We're thankful for that. So please keep that church in prayer. Please keep Pastor Ronnie Booker in prayer and his brother and his sister and that whole family, that whole church family. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to let Brother Josh come at this time. Amen. And uh, after that, we're going to prepare to dismiss. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Give God a hand of praise. All right. Y'all bear with my voice. I have a Baptist shout today, so my voice gone. Y'all bear with me. Um, so I'm coming to uh, just remind the, the Paradise Church family that February is the month that we set aside to celebrate our pastor, Pastor W. Trey Davis and wife and family. But God has been gracious to us. He has given us a leader after his own heart, and we're grateful. We're grateful for the word on a weekly basis. We thank, we're thankful for his leadership. And it's now time for us to give a portion back to him, with, which he has given to us. Amen. Amen. He is definitely deserving of double honor in this season. Uh, pastoring in a pandemic is not easy. I've never experienced it before. I don't think anybody has really experienced a pandemic uh, preaching pastor. But we thank God for his determination, his persistence. Right. And we thank 
thank God that because of his relationship, we're able to be blessed. Benefits of the blessing of the relationship we have with God. So we're grateful for that. So with that being said, we are expecting our first uh, guest on next Sunday, Pastor Joseph Mays. He'll be joining in with us. Let's give him a hand for that. Amen, amen. So we're going to be expecting him uh, to bless us with the word of God. Uh, I encourage each member, find it in your heart if it's available. Uh, we're asking for each member to uh, bless the first family with $100 uh, to just sow into the ministry. If you're not able to give $100, don't feel that you can't participate. Whatever the spirit leads you to, to give to the pastor, feel free to do it. We want to make sure that we bless this family because they blessed us. Amen. amen. On the uh, third Sunday, which is the 21st, we will, uh, along with the celebration, we're going to have a drop for our pastor. So make sure you pass the word around. We're also going to put out a flyer this week for, on social media so we can just be prepared for that. We want to bless the pastor Amen. in the sanctuary and also the members who are not able to come in the sanctuary for certain reasons. We want to make sure we bless them. So we'll send more information about that this week. Uh, but let's continue to pray for the first family. Let's continue to pray for the relationship that he has with God. And as God continues to bless him, he's going to bless us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And thank you so much, Brother Josh. Yes, Amen. Man. Yeah, we have an awesome lineup prepared for uh, these next couple of Sundays. As Brother Josh said, on uh, next Sunday, Pastor Joseph Mays from the Mount Fisker Church in Anglican will be here to bless us in the word. Amen. That Wednesday night, and then right after that, uh, my childhood pastor, the pastor emeritus of the New Faith Church, the founder of the New Faith Church, Dr. T.R. Williams Sr., is going to be with us on that Wednesday night. Amen. Then that Sunday, we're going to close out with my pastor, Bishop Bill Hines. Amen. Who's going to be here for the New Company Christian Church. It's going to be an awesome time. Amen. Amen. Our Amen. praise team and everybody's going to be singing. We're just going to have us a good time just thanking God for this first year that we've been together. Amen. 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 All right. So, y'all, I believe that that is it. We are done. I don't believe it's been a great day. We can go home now. Amen. Hold on, hold on, bring it out. Just say one. All right, so here's how we're going to do dismissal. Amen. Uh, Lady D and I are going to step out. We're going to step out the doors. Amen. And we're just to kind of get everybody out pretty quickly. We're going to give you a distant greeting. Amen. As you're leaving. Is that all right? Amen. 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 All right. Come on, First Lady. Amen. Oh, great day. God bless the time and offering that we receive, God, that it may further your kingdom. Bless those who gave, bless those who had the desire to give but did not have it. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. The people of God said, Amen. 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 Relationships, Relationships. Restoration. Restoration. Renewal. Renewal. Paradise go. 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 May God's blessings be upon you. You are dismissed.